That's right, Pat. Respect your elders. What is up, fellow fans of Clash Royale? It is here. I know you guys have been asking for it. The Night Witch Challenge is upon us, and it's a draft challenge. And we're going to go ahead and show you guys some Night Witch action between myself and Chief Pat. Now, of course, you might see slightly different battles over on Pat's channel. I'm assuming you'll already subscribe, but if you don't, make sure you sub, make sure you check out those battles, and uh, make sure you comment down below that the only reason he won was because somebody came to the door. Alright? I had a good excuse. Okay, so let's check it out. You can see right here, I've got the Night Witch. Very excited to have the Night Witch, and uh, man, let me tell you right away, she feels really good. I like her a lot. I think that she's going to be a lot of fun to use. Very versatile. Now, I kind of got a little crazy here, but this worked out pretty well. The old rocket and the hog rider right on the tower took out the Valkyrie for the most part. But now, the Night Witch, the main thing about the Night Witch is the fact that she does not do the splash damage that the regular witch does. So she does some pretty good melee damage with that staff of hers, but she doesn't do splash, so she's not going to be effective against, say, minion hordes, skeleton armies, things like that, except for her bats. Now the bats, I really love the animation. They almost look like a biting animation, like they're snapping or biting at their opponents. A very, very cool and uh, just, I'm so excited to finally see the Night Witch coming to the game. It's just going to be a lot of fun and unfortunately whether I can unlock her or not in a real 12 win challenge remains to be seen. But heck, if I can beat Chief Pat fair and square, and I did, then hopefully I can win 12 out in the real world. So it really, you know, it comes down with these draft challenges to card choice. You really have an opportunity to throw your opponent off and keep him from having good counters. You have to focus on what cards you were taking and make sure that you're not handing your opponent the optimum counter to the cards that you prefer to play with that you've taken in the first round or two of drafting. And so when that works out, and it kind of worked out here, I've got the mini P.E.K.K.A. to control his royal giant. And I don't care if it is a draft challenge, I'm still calling Chief Pat, a dirty Royal Giant player, and again, me with the Rocket and the Hog Rider combination. Not ideal, but it does take the tower down. So, you know, it obviously wasn't a high-value Rocket, uh, other than it got the old 493 on the tower. Hey, but remember you guys, like in my streams, say it with me, 493, tower for free. It's critical that you remember that number, because if you've got a tower that has 500, you don't bother and rocket it unless you've got something else like a log or a zap to follow up. Now here go those bats once again. Love the way they're chipping away at the Valkyrie. And I love the bats that spawn after the witch goes down. Now they get one-shotted by pretty much everything out there. But they can definitely add up if you've got a group of units that are banding together. Especially if the witch, say, was in support of a bigger unit like a golem or a giant. Then those bats are going to help out and try to help protect that tank even after the witch is gone. Now this was a tough battle, obviously it's 1-1, we're just about to go into overtime. Chief Pat with that Royal Giant Executioner and the Dragon. A pretty solid combination, that dirty lightning spell, man, keeps on getting me. Well, okay, I can't really call his lightning spell dirty, it's not any dirtier than my rocket that took out his first tower. So he throws the fireball on the witch, notice she's pretty tanky there. She survives that fireball with what looks like about 20 or 25% of her hit points left. So good job right there by the Witch. The Knight trying to get in there. Unfortunately, the Valkyrie is going to wipe out the Wizard and the Witch. And now Pat coming at me with about 2 minutes and 30 seconds left in OT. The Mini P.E.K.K.A. doing a job right here. That middle deployment of the Royal Giant. Hate that. Throwing everything I can right here. Once again, the Witch survives. And I need to remember she does melee. You see, it's so easy, if you noticed right there, to make that mistake and drop her back like you would drop a regular witch. And that was definitely a lesson I was learning as we played. But it worked out pretty well right here. We got there and sure enough, look who did it. None other than the Night Witch gives me the win against Chief Pat. So we will get back into the uh, Night Witch draft challenge in a second. Let's check out the rewards here as uh, through the magic of the developer build, I did maybe happen to start at 9-0. I mean, just, you know, not that... Everybody can't do that, but there we go. 
So 10 and 0, and uh, that means we collected all of these rewards up to 10 wins so far. Uh, obviously, you guys can see those in the game. And all right. Now, we're going back into another battle right away, and I missed the very beginning of this battle, but I had to record the rest and use it because it was just too good. Now, this time, I'm the Dirty Lightning user, but Pat is the Dirty Sparky user, which I will have to admit is one of the cards that I'm most likely to BM my opponent if they're using it by choice. Now, there's the single elixir skeleton counter to the Sparky. Get some damage on that left tower, but so far so good. Keeping Sparky down. Okay, maybe not that good. I'm a little bit angry right here. <laughs> Pat's off to an early lead, but I've got the Tesla, not a uh, favorite by any means. Pat gave me the Tesla, wasn't my choice. I did have the Night Witch though. And now notice I'm dropping her off to the right here. A lot of players drop their regular witch directly behind the King's Tower. If you do that with the Night Witch, the first two bats will split up. And you probably don't want that. You probably want both bats going down the same lane. So you need to drop the Night Witch either at least one more tile over to the left or to the right of the King's Tower to avoid having those bats split up. A single bat going down a lane all by itself is completely wasted. And uh, the bats, again, pretty small, pretty uh, low in hit points, but they can gang up if given the opportunity. All right, that time I was able to pull Pat's Hog Rider off and keep it away from my tower. We're down just about to double elixir, lightning spell. You can see the miner and the night witch is really the ideal combination I'd like to pull off. I'd like to get that night witch and her bats moving in as the miner is on the tower. But I kind of have to think about this Sparky coming down the lane. There she goes. She's got four bats up in action. And here comes the Miner. Unfortunately, going to be too late for the first four bats. The next two come in, and the Archers are there to counter. On the left-hand side, Lightning on the Minions. And uh, yes, a Bolt on Sparky as well. The Knight getting in there, doing the sacrificial thing, trying to stop that Sparky from getting to the tower. Another Hog Rider is going to bite the dust against my Tesla. He's got the Tesla on wheels. I've got the Tesla that pops out of the ground. Well, more or less. I mean, that's kind of what it's like, right? All right. So 30 seconds left. And now suddenly I've got a pretty good lead going on here on the right-hand side. And then Pat completely misses the Princess. Got to thank him for that one. Beautiful miss of the Fireball there. Completely airballing it on the Princess. His Hog Rider coming down the left-hand side. Tesla's going to get there. But check down the right lane. Too much pressure. Time running out. And watch this. Nothing left for Pat to do. He tries to get there. But the minions can't do it even with a clone spell. 38 hit points left. Super close game. Pat and I having a lot of fun playing the Night Witch Challenge together. All right, let's move on at 11 and 2 now. Who do I find but Chief Pat one more time and having so much success with the Miner before. I'm using the Miner. I give him the Bomber and the Archers and the Clone spell so far. So you guys got to admit, this looks pretty good for me. He, look at the cards he has. They're terrible. I would never want any of those four cards. Really happy with my cards so far. Would love to get a Rage spell in there, Balloon Rage. Nothing better than that. But we'll see. We've got the Night Witch. We've got the Miner. The Zap spell, well, you know, Zap, not ideal anymore these days. But you know what? Maybe, maybe the Zap spell is going to have some use against those one-shottable bats. And how about this, you guys? Chief Pat becoming a Royal Giant expert? Okay, now there's the mistake. You can see I was just talking about it in the last battle. The Night Witch dropping that single bat down the left-hand side, completely wasted. Here comes the Balloon on its way with the Miner and the Witch working their way in. He drops the Prince to counter the Witch, but the Balloon is going to get there. And so did a couple of the Bats. And look at all these Bats, man. That tower is history. On the left-hand side, I'm suffering some damage. Pat can do nothing but laugh. The Princess stops kindly and accepts the Fireball in the face. Very nice of the Princess right there to help me out. And I get the Royal Giant down with about two minutes left. And a tower is already down. Pat can't believe it. 55 seconds in. And But again, you guys, you got to remember, we were having a blast, having fun, trolling each other a little bit back and forth as we usually do. But don't let him tell you he wasn't trying. Okay? And, and do let him tell you that I got distracted on that other battle. But Okay, so here comes his Royal Giant. This Zap spell, well... Ideally, it would have come a little bit later as he clones a whole mess of stuff, but check out my Night Witch, man. 
absolutely just killing it. The Night Witch and the Bats, she gets right on that tower. Remember, only melee damage. And quickly, the Balloon is there as well. So suddenly, things are not looking so good for Pat. Overkill Fireball on what used to be a tower and a princess. And uh, yeah, so I had to thank Pat. I mean, come on, you know, this doesn't really count as true BM, you guys, because Pat and I are always having fun. Uh, you know, BM against a stranger is a different thing. Now, Pat goes with double prince. I pretty much figure I'm going to lose the left tower. So it's just a matter of trying to hold him off and making sure he doesn't make a, a three crown comeback on me here, which I would imagine was what he had in mind. Now, the archers are eventually going to get this tower down, but he's only got 50 seconds left, and he is going to go for three. He drops the royal giant on the left-hand side. The princess tries to help out. Got to throw in the miner there. There goes the clone spell one more time. Cloning the royal giant. Unorthodox, yes. Uh, but that's what we're talking about again, you guys. Just having fun. The very unusual cloned royal giant on the left-hand side. In comes the double prince push one more time. 20 seconds left. Look at all the damage on his king's tower. Not a lot on mine yet. Bats all over the place. Look at that. Three, six, eight bats. Bursting out of that witch who spawned four and then several more when she went down. One more attempt with a cloned royal giant. Gotta love Pat for not giving up with this one. But time is going to count down. And yes, that is going to be win number 12. But before we go off and celebrate and open our chest, we have to look at the prettiest screen in the game. There it is. Galadon wins. Chief Pat loses. And again, he needs to learn to respect his elders. I'm sure that was a sincere well played from Pat. Okay, so here it comes, win number 12, you guys, and some pretty good rewards. You obviously can see this chest is going to be equivalent of the Grand Challenge. There's the Night Witch. Love that screen. Oh, cannot wait to have her in my deck. She's going to be a lot of fun to play. Then we go ahead and open the uh, Grand Challenge chest with 1,100 cards in it, and with these epics coming early, right here, I'm thinking... It looks like this last card's going to be a legendary, and of course, it's the legendary Mortars. 330 of them. Fantastic. Oh, well. Hey, at least it's the developer build. You guys are going to be playing it for real, and so am I. Thank you for sticking around all the way to the end. Make sure you check out Pat's video and remind him that somebody came to the door. And remember, you guys are not Gala fans. You're the Gala fam. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you back here again tomorrow for more Full Attacks. Gallidon, if you're fans of the Gallop farm, then watch Chief Paddy.